Good evening, my dear friends, and welcome to our Sunday night Vigil for Peace, and it's dedicated to the divine mercy of the Cosmic Christ. And it is good to welcome you to our live show. But first, let us just be still. Come back to our heart, our teacher. Be still now. And if you have a candle nearby, would you like to light yours with mine? And we send out love, peace, gratitude, thanksgiving to the divine mercy of God for all the many graces and blessings we receive from the hands of a loving Father, Mother God. I recollect my first introduction to the devotions to the Divine Mercy going back as far as 1985 when I had the privilege of meeting an amazing man as a priest in the Archdiocese of Liverpool and he was the first Catholic priest in the United Kingdom to establish the devotion to the divine mercy of Jesus. He met with a lot of opposition from his bishop and the Archbishop of Liverpool. And many within the, the church viewed him as probably being overtly religious or gone with the wind. And I came to know him through nursing his mom in our small nursing home in Liverpool. And his spirituality, his humility, really touched my heart. But let me give you some background information to this beautiful feast that's always celebrated on the Sunday after Easter Sunday. And it has a great following around the world. You only have to type in Divine Mercy and it brings up an enormous amount of information which is good. It's good for the soul. The Divine Mercy is a Roman Catholic devotion to the merciful love of God and the desire to let that love and mercy flow through one's own heart towards those in need. The devotion is due to the apparitions of Jesus received by a Polish mercy nun, Mary Faustina Kowalska, born in 1905 and died in 1938. She was known as the Apostle of Mercy and now a canonized saint. Faustina Kowalska reported a number of apparitions, visions and conversations with Jesus, which she wrote in her diary, later published as the book Diary, Divine Mercy in My Soul. The three main themes of the devotion to the Divine Mercy are to ask for and obtain the mercy of God, to trust in Christ's abundant mercy, and finally to show mercy to others and act as a conduit for God's mercy towards them. The devotion places emphasis on the veneration of the Divine Mercy image, which Sister Faustina reported as a vision of Jesus while she was in her cell in the convent. 
the image is displayed and venerated by Catholics on its own and is solemnly blessed during Divine Mercy Sunday. The devotion includes specific prayers such as the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. And interestingly, the Divine Mercy devotion is followed by Catholics and is also recognized and celebrated in the Anglican Communion around the world. The devotion, Faustina's chapel at her resting place, the Basilica of Divine Mercy in Krakow, proclaim that mercy is the greatest attribute of God. Words attributed to Jesus by St. Faustina in her diary. The primary focus of the Divine Mercy devotion is the merciful love of God and the desire, the desire to let that love and mercy flow through one's own heart towards those in need of it. As he dedicated the Shrine of Divine Mercy, Pope John Paul II, who today was canonized, Saint Pope John Paul II, in Rome. What an amazing day. Referred to this when he said, apart from the mercy of God, there is no other source of hope for mankind. As in the prayers that form the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, there are three main themes to the Divine Mercy devotion. To ask for and obtain mercy of God, to trust in Christ's abundant mercy, and finally to show mercy to others and act as a conduit for God's mercy towards them. The first and second elements relate to the signature, Jesus, I trust in you, on the Divine Mercy image. And Sister Faustina stated that on April the 28th, 1935, the day the first Divine Mercy Sunday was celebrated, Jesus told her, Every soul believing and trusting in my mercy will obtain it. Let's read that again. Jesus told Sister Faustina on the first Divine Mercy Sunday, Every soul believing and trusting in my mercy will obtain it. The third component is reflected in the statement, Call upon my mercy on behalf of sinners, attributed to Jesus in Faustina's diary. This statement is followed in the diary by a specific short prayer. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you, which Faustina also recommended for the hour of divine mercy. In her diary, Faustina wrote that Jesus told her, I demand from you deeds of mercy, which are to arise out of love for me, and that he explained that there are three ways of exercising mercy towards your neighbour, the first by deed, the second by word, and the third by prayer. The Divine Mercy devotion views mercy as the key element in the plan of God for salvation and emphasises 
the belief that it was through mercy that God gave his only Son for the redemption of mankind after the fall of Adam. The opening prayer for Divine Mercy Sunday Mass refers to this and begins, Heavenly Father and God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. The first Divine Mercy painting by Kazimorowski in 1934 at the Divine Mercy Sanctuary at Vilnius. Paint an image according to the pattern you see with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. The chaplet is associated with the paintings of the image, as in Sister Faustina's diary. The most widely used is a Polish image painted by Adolf Heiler. Heiler painted the image in thanksgiving for having survived World War II. That's amazing. In the image, Jesus stands with one hand outstretched in blessing, the other clutching the side, wounded by the spear, from which poured beams of falling light, red and white in color. An explanation of these colors was given to Sister Faustina by Jesus himself, saying, The two rays represent blood and water. These colors of the rays refer to blood and water as referenced in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 19, verse 34 and which is also mentioned in the optional prayer of the chaplet. The words, Jesus, I trust in thee, usually accompany the image. Jezu ufam tobie, in Polish. The original Divine Mercy image was painted by Eugene Kazimierowski in Vilnius, Lithuania under St. Sister Faustina's direction. However, according to our diary, she cried upon seeing that the finished picture was not as beautiful as the vision she had received. But Jesus comforted her, saying, not in the beauty of the colour nor of the brush is the greatness of this image, but in my grace. The picture was widely used during the early years of the devotion and is still in circulation within the movement, but the Heile image remains one of the most reproduced renderings. Though the origins of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy and, is, and its use of rosary beads are distinctly Catholic in nature, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy can be said by non-Roman Catholics as well. Rosary beads are indeed used to say the prayer. As a complement to the Divine Mercy Chaplet, Excuse me. A prayer can be said at 3 p.m. This is the hour of Jesus' death as he died in the ninth hour. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable, Divine mercy, envelop 
the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. The chaplet may be said alone or as part of a novena. Sister Faustina wrote that in her visions, Jesus instructed her that the Feast of the Divine Mercy, the Sunday after Easter, be preceded by a Divine Mercy novena, which would begin on Good Friday and conclude on Divine Mercy Sunday, which is today. The Hour of Divine Mercy, in her diary, St. Faustina wrote that Jesus specified three o'clock each afternoon at the hour at which mercy was best received and asked her to pray the Chaplet of Mercy and venerate the Divine Mercy image at that hour. On October the 10th, 1937, in her diary, Faustina attributed the following statement to Jesus. As often as you hear the clock strike the third hour, immerse yourself completely in my mercy, adoring and glorifying it. Invoke its omnipotence for the whole world and particularly for poor sinners, for at that moment, mercy was opened wide for every soul. Three o'clock in the afternoon corresponds to the hour at which Jesus died on the cross. This hour is called the hour of divine mercy or the hour of great mercy. A lot of information there. But there are some beautiful prayers and I'd like us to just reflect on the Divine Mercy. What is the Divine Mercy? Again, in 1933, God gave Sister Faustina a striking vision of his mercy. And Sister tells us, I saw a great light with God the Father in the midst of it. Between this light and the earth, I saw Jesus nailed to the cross and in such a way that God, wanting to look upon the earth, had to look through our Lord's wounds and I understood that God blessed the earth for the sake of Jesus. Of another vision, on September 13th, 1935, she writes, I saw an angel, the executor of God's wrath, about to strike the earth. I began to beg God earnestly for the world with words which I heard interiorly. As I prayed in this way, I saw the angel's helplessness and he could not carry out the just punishment. The following day, an inner voice taught her to say this prayer on ordinary rosary beads. First say, One Our Father, Hail Mary, and I believe. Then on the large beads say the following words. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the world. On the smaller beads, you are to say the following words. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And in conclusion, you are to say these words three times. 
Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Jesus said later to Faustina, Say unceasingly this chaplet that I have taught you. Anyone who says it will receive great mercy at the hour of their death. Priests will recommend it to sinners as the last hope. Even the most hardened sinner, if he recites this chaplet even once, will receive grace from my infinite mercy. I want the whole world to know my infinite mercy. I want to give unimaginable graces to those who trust in my mercy. When they say this chaplet in the presence of the dying, I will stand between my father and the dying person, not as the just judge, but as the merciful saviour. I'd like us now to just spend the remaining few minutes in a quiet guided meditation in the presence of Jesus, the Divine Mercy. I would like us to relax now. I would like us to be still and kick off our shoes, be comfortable just focus on your in-breaths, take a nice deep non-labored breath and as you exhale release any tension or fear, worry or anxiety and place it into the hands of the Christ and just relax. Relax in the presence of love because God is love and you and me are a child of love. So as we close our eyes, we visualize a bright light in the distance. It looks like the sun, but this light is moving towards us. And with it is coming the violet flame. There is a profusion of color flowing from this ball of light. And as it comes towards us, we see the face of a young man with long blonde hair, a beautiful smile, something else is interesting us, his hands, as he lifts them to greet us, they have the marks of the nails, and as we look down we see his feet with the marks of the nails. And now that the mist has lifted, we see in the centre of his chest, a radiant heart. But it's no ordinary heart. As we look, we see colors of the violet flame piercing us like lasers. And they leave us soft, calm, reflective, still. And now the figure is practically touching us and we know in our heart that this is Jesus, the barefoot Galilean, now risen and who has come to give us a gift on this special day. 
Divine Mercy Sunday. He invites us to come to him. There is no hesitation because in our heart we know him and we know that the marks that he shows on his hands and his feet and around his head and in his side are the marks of love that he willingly endured for our freedom. And as we fall into his arms, his heart is beating with such love. It is touching our heart. There is a connection, an energy that is flowing from his heart into our heart. It is the heart of the divine mercy of God flowing through their sun into our being. And we sense the radiant light of the love of God flow up and around our head, releasing all tension and fear, anxiety. And that love is flowing freely down into our heart space and there is a connection with the divine. It's as if we have melted into the arms of Jesus and he holds us like a mother her helpless babe but he holds us in such a way to set us free, to set us free from years of unhappiness, sadness, or maybe illness, maybe uncertainty about our tomorrow, and no words are being uttered, only the love that is flowing from the heart of Jesus. And in your days, you look up into his face and you see the most amazing beauty, the beauty of a Lord, of a King, the Son of God. And his eyes are piercing blue and they're full of love for you. And his smile, it's a gentle smile and it's saying something to your heart, come, all is well, all is well. I release you from all the oppression, the sadness and the fear. And I invite you to trust, to trust in me, to invite me into your life, to surrender your heart to this selfless love. And at this moment, you feel a sharp, stabbing sensation in the center of your heart. It is the arrow of love from the heart of the Christ, piercing your heart with unconditional love. And from that piercing, there is an inward glow, a reawakening to who you are as a child of God, a beloved, a co-creator of God. And 
Would you hear the Lord Christ whisper to you, I am the Lord your God, and I have suffered for love of you, and I bring you my love, and I bring you the gift of mercy. You are forgiven because you are loved. Embrace all that you are as a child of my love and now surrender. Surrender your life, your heart, to the Father, Mother, God, who desires your return so you can be free. Free to be a light shining in the dark, a light that will lead many back to my love, who are lonely and alone and many living in fear. Be that light, be my hands, be my feet, go in peace.